everyone, and welcome back to my monthly crafting and talking show, Craft Versations, where this month my guest <laughs> is the long awaited, much anticipated, beautiful minute sister, Laura Spencer. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So happy to have you. I was going to intro you, but everyone knows what you're from. You're from the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. Also, other popular shows, including Bones and The Big Bang Theory and commercials. <laughs> Skittles commercial, I believe. And commercials. <laughs> and many things. We're going to make a craft inspired by you. And that's <laughs> a sweater pumpkin. Sweater pumpkins for the win. <laughs> Except they're not really sweater pumpkins. We're gonna be putting fabric strips on these pumpkins and making them look very cute in autumnal. Autumnal? So these autumnal. someone did a really cute job. They're of pretty that, cute little pumpkins. But you, we could do better. You we could. We could. So if you want to craft along with us at home, here's what you'll need. You will need some fake pumpkins. You can find these at a craft store. They're plastic. They're cheap, but they've got a lot of heart. You'll need some Mod Podge. You will need some fabric. As you can see, I have already cut it into strips just to save time. And you will need some fabric scissors. You'll need a little foam thingy to brush on your Mod Podge on the fabric. Should we explain why this is inspired by yeah. me? <laughs> Like you're right, I it's never said maybe that. Maybe not common knowledge of my <laughs> love for fake pumpkins around this time of year. Um, but Mary Kate got a glimpse into my it life did, with yes. the amount of fabric pumpkins that yeah. I have in my house. Yeah. Uh, I think I put them out like even in September. Whoa, like I, you're ready. I had them in a box from last year I when I accumulated, it. like every time I went to Target. Are we not supposed to say brands? Oops. No, it's fine. Um, okay, cool. We're Target. sponsored by Home Goods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not sponsored by anyone. <laughs> Man, you should be. Right? Let's get that going. Open to it. <laughs> but yeah, so I just accumulated them. Like every time I went to Target, I would get a new pumpkin because they're so cute. I recently was at Laura's home and the autumn decorations were very festive. I know my autumn. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> and your pumpkins were really nice. These are going to look a little more... Um, no, these are going to be great. We'll see. So the um, tutorial that I found said to pull up the top of the pumpkin, the stem part, and if it comes off, it's okay. You can oh, yeah. put it back on. Will you come up? Yeah, perfect. This cutie little thingy. Because you'll want to stick the fabric under it. Do so you want it to come all the way off or just no, lift? No, that'll work. Gently lift. Gently lift. The Ooh. stem. Mine came all the way out. It's fine. Because you want the fabric to like, you want to put the stem on top of the fabric. Oh, Whoa, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's it's what okay. happens when you're not gentle. <laughs> You can cover it up with fabric. It'll be Which fine. is what we're doing anyway. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so you're That's definitely cute. going to have to cut these strips because I made them overly big. Sure. sure and sure. it helps if you want to make it kind of a point at the top and bottom so that like when they overlap, you know, just like cut yourself a little point there so that on the top and the bottom they don't get too like all on top of each other since they're all going to meet at that point. Cute. That makes sense. And then we will uh, modge podge away. So, Laura, yes. how are you? Doing What's well. What's going on Doing in your well. life? I am in the middle of pre-production, I'll say, for a short film yes. called Likeness that maybe some of you saw me fundraising for. Yes. Thankfully, Mary Kate and Ashley and Daniel and Julia all posted about it, it and helped us raise money and sign so. some Pride and Prejudice sure uh, copies sure uh, for you know perks and such like that during the campaign. But yeah, we successfully funded our project, Yay. and I leave in what three days Very to soon. go film in Canada. Are you so excited? So by the time this is posted, I will have already. Oh yeah, we'll have wrapped. Likeness. Yeah. This oh, yeah. is going to be really crazy to watch. It will be in the past. Hello, future selves. Whoa. Hopefully you're still Whoa. alive and well. <laughs> Hope you're doing good. <laughs> Sorry, that got really dark. I just Hope thought about the, the state of the world and I got sad. Oh, God. <laughs> and here we go. We no. start We start craft conversations with 
Hmm. The topic. Oh uh, no. Lightness is so exciting and you are working with Emily Diana Ruth. Yes. Who is a wonderful female creator. She's and awesome. another gal, I believe, right? Jamie Miller, Jamie who is Miller. also awesome. She is more on the documentary side of things. Okay. This is not a doc that we're making, but like she's made she's recently made her own doc that looks incredible. I cannot wait to see it. But she's helping produce and then she also helped create so we all had like a writer's room like early this year in January together. They came out to LA, stayed with me, and we, cool. we wrote this thing. And we wrote like a huge long version of the idea mm -hmm. because we weren't really sure what we were making. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to make a short version of it to be able to pitch, to be able to someday mm -hmm. hopefully make the More. long mm -hmm. big idea. Mm -hmm. So it's all been very exciting because it feels good to not just be sitting on, a, on an idea waiting for somebody to help us make it. We're just totally. doing it with the help of all the people who helped make that possible through the campaign, which is just so cool. So um, I had never done that before. Yeah, I've been was, in things that were crowdfunded, but I've never like, ask, how was that experience? Um, it was really, really neat to see the, kind of like the support that comes when you put yourself out there. Yes. Obviously it's terrifying mm -hmm. to make that leap, but I feel like you know, it was obviously worth it and not as scary as I thought it would be. Very cool, very motivating. That's awesome. Which I'm sure you feel like with yeah. the support of yes. your fans on Patreon, like yes. you feel like you, uh -huh. what you're doing means something to people. Yes. And it's and that's really exciting. And I think right? that's something that I don't know. I feel like as an actor, you need to have that like <laughs> knowledge that the stuff you're doing is like <laughs> getting out there and being seen by people. And otherwise, it, I don't know, because that's why we do it. We make it for people you yeah. know, to enjoy and consume. And it's really exciting when people care enough about your work to help make it happen. And that's really cool. And then the cool thing about that is that you get to make exactly what you want to make. And that is the cool thing. That's really awesome because Hollywood doesn't work that way. So it's cool that you guys allow us to work that way by supporting the projects that we make. Yeah. How, how's that going? Thanks, guys. <laughs> how's this going? Yeah. This little project that you guys have helped me create is <laughs> it's, it's going well. I'm kind of going a different route I'm, here. I'm interested I'm in this. I'm planning it out to I see, see how many I see, strips I, I want see. and kind of if I, I want to like overlap. I Maybe see. that's like a step. I tend to kind of no, I like draw that. it out. I like that. Hey, don't um, let me cramp your style. You do your thing. No, and it's just a lesson here that there's like different ways to get so to your goals. <laughs> so, that's so true. So did you write? part of lightness as well yes. or like wow that's exciting yes so we all three work together on the overall idea and um like starting with the the version of the short and everything look mm -hmm. at all of that work but <laughs> we'll see we'll see if that mattered <laughs> it's not my first thing to write but it's the first thing that's like seeing the light of day that's so cool to have been a part of writing and that's so exciting i feel very excited yeah do you like doing that do you want to continue to do that in the future i think i do that's great and i've been like english was always my favorite subject yeah. like it was always my yeah. best subject my mom has told me all my life like you should write but i don't think she meant like you should go write like for film and television like i think right. she like has always thought i should like write short stories or things like that and sure. so this is a version of that. Sure. And of course my parents are super supportive of all my creative endeavors. That's you know, wonderful. sometimes I know that parents like sometimes don't support that. So I've been fortunate in my life to have parents who like championed being a creative. That's so great. I have attempted all types of creativity all my life. Yeah, I remember at some point during like years ago, I might, maybe shouldn't say this because people are gonna be like, oh my God, do it. You like talked to me about like doing a song together or something. Oh do you remember that? Oh, I'm so you're embarrassed like, no, that you even remembered sorry. that. I like no, recorded this song. Yeah, but it was great. I was like, I, I heard you sing and it was so good. Oh, I forgot to do the cut thing that you did. Oh yeah, you might want to trim them because I cut, I made them too long because some of the pumpkins are big. I gotta listen to the teacher. <laughs> Listen to the teacher. Listen to the teacher. Yeah, you like had recorded this cool it's song. So funny. I'm sorry I brought it up. No, don't be. That's <laughs> kind of amazing. You know, I, I wish that I was a singer. You, oh, you sound good. are such a good singer. Oh. I I can't. Like I've I've straight up like <laughs> I don't think that's true. I've been in a situation where 
like a casting director has has been like oh we'd love to bring you in for something like can you sing and I wanted so badly to lie and be like yeah <laughs> yes and I couldn't I had to be like you know oh you know I sing and my boyfriend likes it when I sing. I think um, you do sing. I think you would. I, I don't. Like, if I sing, it's very, this is what I say every time, very folksy vibe. Yeah, I like that. But that's just fancy for saying, like, <laughs> I can carry a tune. I think you could do it well enough. I'm telling you. Had to. We, so, Michael and I, my, my boyfriend, we, we tried to record like a children's. CD for his nephew turning one Aww. and we tried to sing some songs like just you know your standard twinkle twinkle little star things like that and so cute. well we <laughs> really <laughs> we put it down we, we played it back and we're like um <laughs> yeah so maybe we'll just make something else I think we'll go a different route <laughs> We need some voice. Yeah, I love that idea though. That's Isn't adorable. It? You should steal it. Steal it. <laughs> Maybe I will. Steal Is he it. somewhat musical as well? Oh yeah, he plays guitar. He sings. Oh, that's um, cool. I didn't realize like, that. Thought that we um, could do something together, but that's really adorable. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you are, you know, doing new creative things. I do not wish to write, and am not a writer. You don't wish to write ever. You're yeah. saying you're drawing a hard no on that. Hard no. Wow. On writing. Um, Why? Because it's just not where my strength lies, but that's okay, because it is okay. I have other strengths that work well in the sort of shipwrecked workhouse. And I, not being a writer doesn't mean, like, I still feel like I understand story pretty well, and like, I like giving feedback on stuff, but yeah. coming up with characters and scenarios is not what I'm good at, per se. So this is what I always said. Yeah, but here you are. But we as actors are better writers. We have the ability to be better writers than you give yourself credit for. I, that is almost identical to what I used to say. Really? Yeah, it's like, well, I know what I like and I know that I could like have a note about that or something like sure, that, but sure. then you forget that like in a way, like we're, we're always kind of creating our own characters. That Even though a, a writer has, you know, laid it out for us and we have true. a good idea, a starting point, but yeah. there's so much creativity that we don't realize we're doing, I think sometimes as actors that can I translate that so. Well, but we'll see. I won't say never, but I will. For now, leave it to leave it to the precise the experts. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, you're clearly in capable hands. Clear I am clearly Sean. <laughs> Sinead, if you're watching. You're also great. <laughs> this is just where we compliment Sean and he can't do anything about it. <laughs> well, I wish you guys the best on likeness. I'm Thank so you. excited Thank to you. see it when it's finished and Thank good you. for y'all for doing your own thing. Thanks and congrats to you guys too. Thanks. Well, <laughs> thanks to you for being a part of our thing and being our Jane Austen for Pope Oh Barbie. man, that was so fun. <laughs> Perfect. That was I, fun. I don't know if I told you, maybe I did. I never in a thousand years will forget when we, because we premiered Pope Party sort of at Buffer last year and showed the entire thing, and at that time, the final two episodes had not come out yet, so oh, cool. you were still yeah. very much a secret. So we were in the theater watching it with a bunch of people, and when you came on screen, wonderful Emily, who probably maybe is watching this, was at the end of our row, and she just went, <gasps> <laughs> We'll never forget her glee and excitement Aww. at seeing you, and that was, of course, our intent. We were like, man, people would just lose their minds if it was Laura playing Jane Austen, That's and so you were kind enough to oblige. Uh, you guys were kind enough to ask. No, well, we were so happy to have you, and it was super fun, and fun to have a little uh, not reunion reunion in that way. Which, speaking of, yeah, Lizzie Bennet is five years old now. <laughs> Aw, you're so cute at five. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching some of one like old vlog I put up from like VidCon from like three years ago and I was like, wow, it's been a year and a half and people still really care about our show. And I was like, try five. It's crazy. People are still like so into it and still finding it and that's really fun. It is cool and crazy. And I always, I really like everyone that's said something like in public like has taken the time to say something like they always mm. seem like people I would be friends with yeah. like I'm like cool thanks for, <laughs> thanks for saying hi yeah I agree with that it's like always really neat 
It's nice definitely people. a lot of wonderful people. I'm sorry you're waiting for these. Just scissors. staring at her like the scissors, <laughs> like cut. Mary Kate, you're killing me. Sorry. Look at how it's okay. It's going all right. You're just looking great as well. It's really cute. <laughs> We're just gonna cut. You know, you. I think in art, the nice lesson is, is like there are no mistakes. Yeah, that's true. So we just really work with what we've done, and <laughs> I've made some choices. <laughs> But I like it. I like it, Laura. We're working You're doing with it. Doing great. An OBD, five years old, super crazy. Yeah. And I hear Jane Bennett is making she's, a comeback. She's coming back. Whoa. I know. That's, I, people were very excited about that. Um, yeah. I mean, I am too. It yeah. was. It was. Uh, I'll credit Emily for the idea. Oh, really? And here's what's fun about it, which uh, I think we talked about in one of our live streams during the fundraiser. But Emily came up with this idea. She's like, "Let's do a baking video with Jane making snickerdoodles." And Emily, I think, is gonna film it. And so I don't know if anyone that's watching this is familiar with Emily's channel, but she's done a few baking videos oh. that are really pretty yes. like all of her stuff is super I think I have seen beautiful and cinematic and and like very thoughtful and so it's funny because I envision Jane's content to like look like Emily's yeah so I'm pretty thrilled That's about cool. that I'm just like kind of in my head my little sure. fan fiction of like sure. J if Jane were to ever make videos like what would they really be like because mm -hmm. she was so not comfortable like camera mm -hmm. shy mm -hmm. it's just been an interesting kind of dive back into like what yeah. it's supposed to be crafting while I talk to you no you're fine take your time I would be so hesitant to play Lydia again so I say go you you're brave <laughs> I you know not in the like I just would be afraid I don't know like, but don't so know much that. happened for with Lydia's arc not to say that it, a lot didn't happen for Jane's arc but sure. like we're also um, not to give anything away but like it's not going to be a video that reveals like right. a new story. Right. Because I think the instinct would be to make a video of her and like Jane's like, I don't know, you yeah. know, a little different, a yeah. little more comfortable. But yeah. I think it's going to have more of a tone of like what we've already established. I'm more nervous if my hair is gonna fit in uh Milkmaid braids. Whoa, that's If we true. even go that route, or what kind of braid I should do, or if I should do a new braid we never saw, like whatever uh, you know, whatever you do will be perfect, uh, and people see. will love it. How did you and Emily, Diana Ruth, originally get hooked up? Okay, do you remember Michael Aranda? Yeah. So he it's had fun. posted that his friend Emily was looking for a lead actress oh. in her film, in but she was filming in Canada. And like I started Twitter and Instagram like all during Lizzie Bennett. Oh yeah. Um, like it was like being encouraged that we all have accounts so that we could yes. talk to everybody that was watching the show, which I think was really good advice. And like that really was like the beginning of like yeah. all of us kind of learning the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you all excelled far faster than I could have imagined. Like I've always been a little bit more of an Instagram gal. Yeah, but I've also made some mistakes at that time. <laughs> that I it's let's fine. Hear, let's hear the end tell <laughs> what were the mistakes. Well, I just <laughs> should have not been paying so much attention to certain things. But I was young and I cared a lot, so it's fine. <laughs> now I'm less I mean I still you know, I don't know. Big, 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 big thoughts. <laughs> Maybe not Oh, I would so see funny. people say negative things about LBD or Lydia sometimes and I got oh, really upset. Yeah, let's talk really about upset. this. Ooh. I think that this is a, a lesson that we, we should talk about with anybody that like ever has the impulse to want to look at reviews or things like that. Like, yeah. Someone told me something which, a long time ago which I like, I guess I get behind. Like it's, it's kind of a hard thing. Here, okay, let's we'll just spit it out. It's like you can't give weight to a negative thing, but if you're going to abide by that rule, you also can't give too much weight to the positive mm -hmm. because you have to just, you can't let that be your source of like mm -hmm. how you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like it's not that you don't want to listen to feedback, mm -hmm. you know, constructive criticism is always something to be open to, but I think like having a very kind of an even keeled feeling toward any kind of stranger saying something about your work like obviously I appreciate a nice compliment from somebody like it is sure. encouraging everyone but, does but I try not to like hang my hat on that totally you know I, I try to have that come from within <laughs> that is good which is easier said than done and, obviously and I'm not yeah. saying I'm skilled at that no but there is definitely a certain amount of I don't know I mean, it's just a hard balance it's good to be attuned to like the response to your stuff 
but it's also good to like live apart from that and not get too wrapped up in all that because yeah. yeah you're right it can be bad either way it's not good to be like everybody thinks I'm awesome I can do no wrong or yeah. to get your worth from any of that because yeah. it's just fleeting it's not real but I guess you had asked how oh yes I met Emily yes. so it was Twitter which is crazy to say because I was very new to it and so I, I went and um because I think he had tagged her is that how you say on Twitter like her mm -hmm. handle or whatever so I went and I like found her channel and I saw her stuff and you hear how I talk about her videos is like I just really identified with her as a filmmaker of like I know that we're gonna connect very well like I feel like I am watching someone's work who I would love to collaborate with sure. and so I was just kind of like keeping my fingers crossed that I wasn't overstepping by being like hey stranger mm -hmm. I would love an opportunity to audition for you and I think she already watched the Lizzie Bennett diaries yeah so she already knew who I was or like friends of hers that I, I don't want to like put words in her I, I'm pretty sure she was a fan of the show already I think so you're right I feel like I remember something about that. yeah and uh, so the Lizzie Bennett diaries like brought us together which it's, is why like a lot of our perks were kind of like sure. Lizzie Bennett related as well because it's been five years since I've met Emily oh yeah so there's this like big whole five year thing I mean, it's the Going same. On. It is because of Lizzie Bennett that I met Sean in work with Shipwrecked. <laughs> what? Five years? No, it's just like, it was because of that that I was asked to be in Kissing in the Rain. But yeah, that was almost four years ago was Kissing when we shot Kissing in the Rain. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's just like crazy how those things happen. If it weren't for LBD, my entire life would be different. But also like, that's also to say if it weren't for Squaresville because Squaresville, I think, is uh, like led to me getting LBD and it's crazy how all that happens and my life would be Squaresville. so different. Wow. Yeah. Good old scores though. How's your pumpkin My pumpkin uh, is looking really great. I love it! It's adorable! This is really cute. I was actually on the hunt for a gingham pumpkin. Oh, yes. Because I saw one in like a picture branded by Target. <laughs> So I'm really happy that I'm making my own. Okay. It can be hard to get it all like flat. I'm not good at that. So I don't know. Good luck at home if you're trying to get it I flat. Think textures kind of yours That's is true. just that is stunning. <laughs> that could so be I don't know. That could be sold at no. let's talk about it. Pier no. one. <laughs> Yeah, um, a very hip pumpkin. <laughs> well I'd be remiss to not ask you about bones and Big Bang because I guess of like all of my friends and circle and people that I've had on this show, I don't know that anybody's quite had that experience of like, um, Big Bang Theory is like the most popular show in America and you were on it for quite some time, which is so cool. And yeah, it's, it Bones does. as well is like a very popular show and I know. it's my, very cool. My family was thrilled. <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> The state of Oklahoma. Hey, Arkansas loves it too. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. What a what a time of my life. Like yeah. like we're saying, it's like crazy to like look back on like what you've sure. done and like what got you to that different place and yeah. I miss it every day. Aww. I made such good friends doing that as well and That's um awesome. it was just cool. Like the level of talent and uh, like on bones, like I was I never tired of like the dead bodies and the detail that went into them oh, and like sure. all of the people that make the show what it is like the set alone is insane like in an entire studio that was the Jeffersonian like yeah. it was a two story all the rooms were where they like the offices were where they were wow, that's crazy it was the coolest set ever that's so that cool. took up one huge like studio space on a lot so I'll never forget the day that I walked in and saw the Jeffersonian wow. for the first time working in front of a live audience with Big Bang was you know coming from theater like get on sitcoms actors that are come from theater or film people too but it's like it it's so so fun and I think I, I was very intimidated by multicam for some reason I when I first moved be. out here yeah I never but it is done. the most fun you were kind of on those at the same time was that difficult is that stressful no yeah. I got to be on two shows at the same time <laughs> I got is, to work all the time yeah which is awesome uh, but like no. juggling two different you know, I guess jobs in that way. Was no, good. because this this um, schedule of Big Bang is not to say it's easy, but it's like it it's like the ideal job. Like if you wanted kids and sure. things like because you're working, you know, half days usually, and then the day of taping is a full day. But it's not as strenuous as a schedule like Bones is, where they're filming, you know, 
all day and mm -hmm. it's just so so much different when you're on a, a one hour so I definitely like saw the the differences mm -hmm. in that way but as far as I was concerned like when you're an intern on bones you were throughout the episode so like I did work a lot during my episodes but it just it was you know it, it was more it was fun I mean like I would love nothing more to just be busy all the time yeah. acting. Yeah. I don't imagine I'll ever complain if yeah. that were my totally reality and I yeah. never did at the time. That's so wonderful. Yeah. It's more it's more like how have I like adjusted to like having time. <laughs> now it's like, oh how have you? Well because like I don't know, when you're in the midst of something that's so great and you and you're so thankful for it, it's like you're trying yeah. not to jump to the next thing of knowing that you're gonna be unemployed and like yeah. I don't know, like I think that's a challenge that I've tried to get better at, mm -hmm. of just like being able to be excited and like celebrate in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think like the time in between, like the time off and like away from it and stuff has been filled with creative activities, like making Gingham pumpkins. Yeah! You know, spending time with friends and family and like adopting a dog. Yeah! I got a, we got a question about Annie. Tell us about Annie. You got a question about Annie? Yeah, somebody was like, I want to hear Annie's adoption story. That's really <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Thank you, whoever asked about Annie. Yeah, she's I'll let so her know. Sweet. <laughs> so we were talking about getting a dog for quite some time, and I wanted like a massive dog, and Michael wanted a smaller dog, and I was kind of like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so she's, I would say, a perfectly medium dog. She is perfectly medium. <laughs> Not in personality. Meaning, she's just right. physically perfectly medium. Sure. She's not vanilla. But she came from the dog cafe. Mm -hmm. You ever been? I have not been. Have I've you heard of it? Uh, I knew there are cat cafes. I guess I wasn't really. I'm not as hip on the, the dog not, news. Not as much on the dog news. Okay, yeah. well, we'll forgive you. <laughs> Thank forgive you. you. But All the dog lovers out there. That's cool that there's a dog cafe. I had gone to the dog cafe prior to like getting a dog, so I was already familiar with that place. Mm -hmm. And um, you basically you pay money to go uh, get a tea or coffee and play with dogs for I think an hour. And a lot of the dogs in the beginning were older, like elderly dogs or dogs with disabilities that if they were going to be adopted, they needed to go to like a very specific home that could handle a dog like that. And then slowly but surely they started bringing in more puppies and things. So anyway, we, I followed them on Instagram. And so I was kind of like always seeing the new dogs coming in. Mm -hmm. And when Annie's picture came up on their story, I was just like, I just, everything stopped in the world. I'm like, this is? My dream dog. Aww. This is my absolute dream dog. And I took a screen grab and I sent it to Michael and Michael agreed. And it was the first dog that we really were both like, yes. Really? So that was really what sold us on the idea of even sure. like, okay, I guess we're adopting a dog now. So like we went and we met her and you know, it wasn't one of those moments where it's like she jumped in our arms and we were like, yes, <laughs> yes, it's meant to be. We were kind of like, oh, she's a little shy. Oh, this dog's cute. Like, we were like, kind of like, met other dogs as well. <laughs> but Annie, but adorable. She's stuck always, with Annie. She's, we stuck with Annie. Our, we're loyal people. <laughs> we were not prepared for like the amount of shy that mm -hmm. she was and the amount of um, assimilating her into life with humans <laughs> that has been required. So that's been Poor like, Annie. she's the sweetest possible thing in the whole wide world and we love her. We just like really want her to just stop stressing out, you know? Like Aww. just like be, be chill. Like be you're chill. good. Like you're in a good home. How long You've have you had her now? Uh, we've had her for three months. Okay. But she's just, she's the best. And another cute thing about her, cute, I don't know why I would say cute, but <laughs> uh, interesting thing about her, I did not know that dogs can be in the same litter and have different dads. Oh yes, cats too. What? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know yeah, this. Yeah, so that weird. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know this. So it's pretty weird. all of Annie's siblings cuz they all were at the dog cafe. Oh, look different. Different, but they're all built the same. Oh, interesting. Yeah, That's so interesting. Can you tell about her name as well cuz I thought that was adorable. Yeah, so Annie like definitely has very distinct facial hair. <laughs> In fact, everyone always assumes she's a boy. <sighs> Society. <laughs> um and uh so I looked up famous bearded ladies and Annie 
popped up Annie the Bearded Lady and I was like, well, that's it. I love the name Annie and yeah. it fits. That's so, so and obviously I was thinking like Instagram, like we gotta get this oh, yeah. cute little oh, yeah. handle Oh yeah, declared. does she have her own Instagram? Uh, yeah, she's my dog <laughs> and I love Instagram. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, of course. I want to give a shout out to Josh Cohen, Brandy Hillier, Paul Kamarowski, Cameron McFarland, Debbie Lee, Betsy Gibson, and Joanna Kucharska for supporting my acting career on Patreon and making videos like this one possible. You guys rock.